Okay, so um, let's do the first. We do the H1 first. Let's do H1. So then we plot H1. Then, okay, we just show the H1 here. Okay. So to do the fit, we need some function to fit that. This is a fitting function. So to do the fitting function, in this case, uh, like we think this is Gaussian distribution. Uh, this is one dimensional. That means just one dimension with one variable. And with three parameter, one, the center, uh, the aptitude, and the sigma, OK? Uh, so to define a, t, a function, we use a TF1 class, OK? So here, uh, there is a different thing here. In C++, a root version is actually can take in several uh, things that uh, you can take in a method or function, but here you t only take in a class <laughs> like this, and you have to define a code uh, function. That means when the 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 class is code, you return this guy here. Okay, so first let's take a look of the structure of TF1. So the first is the 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 first parameter is just the, the name of the function. Okay, I code my function. It's just a title nothing else then what's the what the content is here my Gaussian uh, here so my Gaussian is a class it defined it like here so normally you have to have this structure you take in a, a T I, I use T as my input and a PAR as my parameter so um, th this kind you can think that this is put into a list here, Python list. So the first one is my t0 is my x, just uh, my variable x, and a is my amplitude, c is my cen center, s is my sigma. So I return, um, I return the number of a calculated value here. Okay, so this is a function. Okay, we said it. The only different thing with my Gaussian with background is that I have another uh, parameter uh, called V here uh, assigned to the third parameter input here and add here. Okay, this will be fit H2 and this will H1 here. Okay, so then we uh, we have to declare the fit uh, the range normally is not so important because when you apply the fit, you, uh, sometimes you have you can control the fit range. But but uh, for other part like a t graph, when you want to plot that, sometimes you, you need to specify the range. And also in the end, you need to put the number of parameter here is three for just a simple Gaussian function. Okay, so so far so good. So we already set a, T, a TF1 function. So we can just copy and paste it. Uh, <laughs> okay, I forget to do this. So you complain. Okay, <laughs> now you shouldn't complain anymore. All right, now I just copy it. Okay, no complain. All right. So, uh, so what sh should I do? Uh, okay, here. So the the next thing is very important to do fits. Uh, it's important to set initial value. So um, from here, uh, we just uh, random pick some. You know, the first first uh, parameter we defined as the amplitude. Uh, well, <laughs> it should be 500 something, right? But but okay, we put this on one, and the second one is zero, center is zero, and width we guess is 0.5. Uh, it, you do need to uh, put uh, initial value by set parameters. This is the first one, second one, uh, third one parameters, okay? And then you should ready to go. So put here, uh, wait, okay. I put, maybe I do something silly, so just keep it here. Okay, um, now to fit that, uh, the histogram th1 
has built-in fit function that's very handy for most of the case. So to do this, you just put the tf1 function, uh, this is a variable fun func to in, into the fit function here. And I put the q option here, and that means I just want a quiet mode so there will not so many uh, information on it. But for the first time, just let me show you what's uh, uh, the default behavior. So I call the font. Okay. What? Oh no. <laughs> I overload the second one, just first one. Okay. So uh, I think I messed up a little bit, so I would do my trick here. I would reload everything by uh, run. 0, 1 first. Okay, so uh, so you should see the fit in the end. So sorry, this part is upset zero. Um, just uh, excuse me. <laughs> That's, okay, so the fit is coming <laughs> beautifully as I test that before. So uh, you fit that. Uh, normally, it would pop up a red curve like that in C++ and uh, root version, um, but in the Py root, you have to still call the C1 update to uh, to make the fitted curve on the campus C1 here. So the next question is how can we retrieve the data? I mean the the fit uh, fit parameters. Uh, it's very easy. So. Um, so first, you, you, you already know you, you set the parameter by set parameters method. Then you want to get parameter. Then it's very natural just use the get parameters. So it would return a list to, uh, to, to something. So you use the fit result to retrieve the returns from the get parameters. Okay. So then just a print up here. So the result is, um, you know, very simple. <laughs> the amplitude is 500, uh, the center around 0.1 and sigma 0.5 as we, um, we did here. All right. Center is 0.1, sigma is 0.5 here. Okay. So this is the first part. Uh, and the second part is very sim similar because uh, we just need to call a different function, put a function on two, and put a, like a initial value, and then again, retrieve the data by uh, get parameters. So just very quickly rerun the code again. Okay, so very beautifully fit. Okay, all right. So that's not so much different. So let's go to the final one. So the final one is that you do all the beautiful jobs. So now you have to finish writing up the the data to file and close it. So, uh, but there is some tricky thing here. Uh, when you close. Uh, call the t-file close method here uh, because we already write uh, h1 we call h1 write before and uh, you close that um, in in root I mean the C++ version the h1 is still uh, available but when you cl when, when pi root you close that it, it's just gone okay so uh, so let's do an example like we close this and we put in the type here and also we can print the type we now we print the type h1 is the th1f type right so how about we close that and print the type again you will see very different like this so we run the code you see this is printed as a noun type so it's just gone so um you close the file you have to notice when you have write file in it uh, call the right method, then it just cannot be uh, accessed anymore. <laughs> this is a, a little bit tricky part. Okay, so uh, the next one is uh, just uh, very simple. Now we create another T file called uh, app2. It's read in my output that root file we just uh, write out from the F. Okay, so how can we uh, retrieve the H1? 
very easy. So you call the get method in the T file, and we use the key H1. That's uh, we specify in the constructor here. So H1, the key here. So we just uh, find this object by its ID, then assign to the uh, uh, th one new here. So the code is uh, the code. Sorry, the code is much clean. <laughs> so in C you will do something like auto uh, h one new, then you equal to th one f, then something f to get maybe this get h1 like this so i th i think this pyro is much much easier for in the for a beginner okay so then again i call the draw to just make sure everything looks sim look identical then i i i just update that so i think you already see this so but why not to see again okay is this is identical one, <laughs> nothing changed. So um, this is the uh, this is the first tutorial. Now we go to another tutorial. It's about the uh, root tree operation.